Hey guys, I'm Jameson with Rogue Engineer and today we're going to show you how to install a pre-hung door with a jam switch. The jam switch is cool because it acts like a refrigerator switch or a light switch in a refrigerator where when the door is open, the light comes on and the door is closed, the light goes off automatically. All right, so first things first, we're gonna go ahead and check the, the hinge side of the door to see if it's level, and it is, so we're gonna leave it just how it is. If this wasn't level, what I would do is I would, I would make it level by shimming this out um, wherever it needed to be, whether it was at the top or the bottom, with a couple of shims, and then just go ahead and tack those in place. So then, when I set my door in place, it would all be nice and level. So I've gone ahead and tucked my wiring back into this hole that uh, the electrician's cut out for me. And I'm not, I'm not gonna set the door yet, but I'm gonna put it in place, and then I'm gonna mark where that electrical box is gonna go. So now before I can cut out the, the hole for the box, I wanna make sure that this hinge side of the door is nice and secure to the jack stud. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to position this so that the top, we know that, again, we know that that jack stud is nice and level, and we're just gonna tack it in place with some brad nails. So this is nice and flush with our drywall up top here. I'm gonna flush it up with the bottom uh, drywall and then tack that in place as well. A speed square is a handy tool to have around when you're checking this to make sure that it's flush with the drywall. The nice thing about working with brad nails before you actually secure this with screws is that the brad nails, um, they just kind of simply tack it and hold it in place and you can still manipulate the frame to get those minor adjustments that you might need when you're setting the door. Okay, so this may not be applicable to everyone, but I, I'm noticing that my door is actually a little bit too tight to the stop. It's rubbing on the stop up here and uh, along the, the bottom edge. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the stop and move it back a little bit or just leave it off for now and that's gonna give us some more room to work with and actually we can slide that box over a little bit more. So basically up until this line, I'm gonna cut this box out. And then this one gets just chiseled out enough or deep enough to recess this box into. So there is actually a, a little piece that will mount to the back of this box that this wire fishes through. Um, we don't have that at this time, so we're gonna just keep on moving. We're just trying to get this jam switch located so that we can set our door. Um, so you're gonna wanna feed the wire through here and check to see if this is going to fit. All right, so I can already tell that the where, where this drywall the drywall is going to have to get cut back right here um so we'll just go ahead and do that with that oscillating tool as well all 
All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and pre-drill these holes with a self-centering bit. Basically, this has a little beveled end that fits right into that hole on the bracket. And then this drill bit depresses and gives you that nice uh, centered pilot hole. Okay, so we're actually not gonna put the faceplate on just yet. We're gonna go ahead and tuck all this wiring back into the box because these door jams are actually gonna need to get painted um, before we can install that final uh, fixture. The next step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close this door and I'm gonna look at up top here, this reveal across the top. I think that looks pretty good. Now, if this, if one side was lower than the other, um, we would just shim up the one side. So like, for instance, if this side was too low, we'd put a shim underneath the bottom of it. Or if this side was too low, since we tacked it in place, we would just have to use a flat bar and a hammer and knock it underneath of the bottom of the, um, the jam at the hinge side, pry it up a little bit, and then slide a shim in there until we got it where we wanted it. Then again, we would tack everything in place to make sure that it stays where we like it. All right, so I've got an 18, 18 gauge brad nailer with two inch brad nails. And like I did uh, previously in the beginning, we're gonna just go ahead and set this in place with brad nails. That way we can still make those slight tweaks. I am first going to go ahead and just flush this up with the front place a brad nail, two brad nails there. Since this is an eight foot door, I'm gonna do one basically at each hinge level or one set of them. And I like to, when we shim this out, I like to put a shim right here by the striker plate so that this is nice and solid. So again, we're just making sure that this jam is nice and flush with our drywall. And then we're gonna close this door. And you'll notice that this gap is very wide. So I'm gonna take my flat bar and I'm just gonna simply pry it out. With those brad nails in there, I can do that. I can adjust this door frame just as I need to. So I'm gonna pry that all out. and make it so that this reveal is the same all the way down. So this is a little tight now, I'm gonna come back and I can simply just, with these brad nails, I can simply just tap it with my hand. Loosen it up a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna go about an inch above the top and an inch, ab uh, inch above the top hinge and an inch below the bottom hinge and just secure this with these nice uh, cabinet screws. So I'm gonna check this with this little 90 degree tool that I've got. And I can see that this, this frame is a little uh, kitty wampus, if you will. Um, so I'm gonna shim out this backside to get this nice tight 90 degree angle. And there we go, we've got our nice 90 degree angle. The nice thing about these trim head screws is that they're reverse threaded at the top. So when you back them out, they'll actually pull the material away from the wall and then you can level it nice and evenly. Um, if you didn't have something like this, just a traditional screw, you would just wanna shim that out. And one, another thing that I noticed is that this is a little bit tight up at the top. So the way that we're gonna fix that is we're gonna take a shim and we're gonna hammer this shim in right here. And that's gonna pull the top of that frame over and give us a nice even reveal across the top. Okay, so we're gonna go back to this as far as uh, leveling out this side. 
This side, we've got a nice even reveal across the top. We've got a nice even reveal. And now all we have to do is come over here and uh, go back to our little pry bar, um, getting this side just right. And the key is to just look at this door and get a nice consistent reveal. We're a little tight here, so I just open it up, bump it in. Get a nice consistent reveal through there. So everything looks good there. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and finish securing the hinge side. Now, if you remember, when we initially looked at this, there was a little bit of a gap here between the level and the jack stud. So I'm gonna look at it again with this guy and that we still got that gap. So I'm gonna go ahead and where I plan on screwing, I'm gonna go ahead and shim this out until we take away all of that gap. Now down here, this stud is a little twisted, so I'm gonna only use one shim from one side up here. We're looking a little more consistent across there. So I'm gonna shim it with two shims so that we don't have that, um, that bend in the wood. Now, some people have different theories on where to screw, if you should screw through the shim or just below it or above it. I like to screw through the shim because then you're not, your jam isn't gonna move as much. It might not uh, torque over the shim or cause this, this section to kind of go in a little bit. Um, and it also secures the shim in place. So I'm all for screwing directly through the shim. Okay, so we've got this side all nice and secure. This is sound. We're gonna close the door again. We're gonna go over and we're gonna check our reveal at the top. The reveal at the top looks nice and consistent. And then we're gonna come down here and we're gonna check our reveal along the side of this door. And that all looks nice and consistent as well. So now for this side of the jam, we're gonna come back and we are going to shim right at each nail point. Um, and then we'll secure that in place checking every single time, every single um, location, and making sure that this is, we've still got a nice and consistent reveal, and then we'll secure it all in place with those trim screws, and then we'll be done. All right, let's take a second to recap the process of installing a pre-hung door. First, you're gonna to wanna to check the hinge side to make sure that the jack stud is plumb. Then, you're gonna park the hinge side with 18 gauge brad nails. Now check the reveal across the top of the door, and if necessary, shim one side or the other to ensure you have a consistent reveal across the top. Then park the strike side of the door with 18 gauge brad nails. Now go back with two and a half inch trim screws and secure the hinge side of the door, shimming as necessary. Now it's time to secure the strike side of the door frame. Shim the strike side of the door frame in order to make sure that you have a consistent reveal and then secure that side of the door frame to the jack stud with two and a half inch trim screws. So as the house progresses, we're gonna make sure to uh, release how-to videos and tutorials on a bunch of the DIY projects that we tackle. Um, but if you want to see how the house has come together thus far, make sure you check out our dream house build series where we detailed everything from excavating, putting the foundation in, the framing, the roof, all kinds of stuff. So make sure you check that out. Otherwise, until next time, be safe and happy building.